Maybe. So, hi, happy Magic Monday. We'll try this again. I was crooked. I was like upside down. It was so weird. So, um, happy Magic Monday. I hope you guys had a great weekend. Um, I wanted to get on here and do a Cinderella inspired card. I don't know if you guys know, but Cinderella is my absolute favorite Disney movie. I love Cinderella. I collect Disney Cinderella things like it's really my favorite. I know you would think Minnie Mouse is my favorite, but it's really just the ears. But um, I love Minnie Mouse ears. I do like Minnie Mouse too, but it's always that classic Minnie, which is harder to find. Anyway. So I decided to do a little Cinderella inspired card today because it's my favorite and I don't know, I just can never get enough. I'll tell you more stories about Cinderella as we start crafting. So happy Magic Monday. Thanks for tuning in. We'll go ahead and we'll get started because I'm a little, well, I, yeah, I'm a little behind because I, I had it on and then I had to close it because it was upside down. So, and I couldn't get it to work. So, all right, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, bye. Not bye. I'm like just excited to get there we go and now I turned on my flash and so now I think I figured out the quirk with the crookedness that I was having before and so I think I'm good now so um we're gonna do a, a Cinderella mice inspired cards today actually I'm actually featuring two different um, I didn't get to finish my other sample card because of the fact that um, the cats jumped up when I was trying to craft and I just had to stop. I was I was trying to do it, but they just, they jumped up. I got this idea from a lady online and, oh, I, th I thought I had written her name down, but I guess I had misplaced it. It was on Stampin' Up! And I kind of thought it was so cool that she did all these monotone colors for her mice. But the, what I love the most is that she also used what we call, we call these the assorted memories and more cards and envelopes. And these are already pre-cut and scored cards. Well, let me grab one from over here. Uh, they're already pre-cut and scored. So you see here's the smaller one that we're going to be using in a minute. And it's already scored. It already has a score line right down. Oops, I was a little hasty in my in my folding there for a second but I think it'll be all right let me get my scoring tool I was gonna say where'd it go my little bone folder I mean and so it's already scored in the center so all I had to do was fold it and so I've already got my card and it comes with the matching envelope and then the large one I already did I already scored I folded it and so here's the large one. It was scored down the center and all, and I already have a large envelope to match it. These are larger than the standard cards that I make. The standard cards I make take up one, um, one sheet of cardstock. You get two and one. These are a little bit larger. So you're going to get less from one piece of cardstock. Um, well, I guess you would get one, and this would be the other half. I bet you anything when I put, no, I guess not. They almost make an eight and a half by 11. I was thinking these might be close, but they're not. Um, so, but yeah, you're gonna have a, a chunk that's much smaller, but it comes with the perfect, if you need little note cards, perfect little note cards. These ones I believe can't go in the mail because they're a little too small, but um, the large ones definitely can go to the mail. Oh, I don't know, they might be able to, because if the small ones, yeah, if the small one is, let's measure it. So it's three and a half. Yeah, these are a little too small. They have to be, I think, three and three quarters. Yeah, I think it has to be three, maybe three and a quarter. I have to check, these might be able to go in the mail actually. I'll have to think, look in that. Cause these are three and a half. I wanna say these can go in the mail even though they're tiny. I'm pretty sure you can put this in the mail. Um, I think it's three and a quarter or three and three quarters, one or the other, where it's just, it's real small. You wouldn't think it could go, but it can. So here's our cards that we're going to make. And here's my little sampler. And I show you my messy sampler because I want you guys to see that I don't just do this on the fly. And I take the time ahead of time to like figure out. I took this other woman's idea. She had used the soft succulent and evening evergreen she had used these colors and just made almost like a monotone card with the mice. 
Well, I didn't necessarily want to use green. I thought about it, but I thought, why don't I just use Cinderella colors? Because these stamps just scream Cinderella's mice to me in my mind. And so that's why I went ahead and um, chose to use um, to use Cinderella colors. And Cinderella has kind of a funny color palette, like depending on who you talk to. And you see, I tried out all my um, blends. And I'll tell you, there's a little problem with using blends on these cards, and I'll show you the issue. But it's not a major issue for most people, but it could be depending on how you feel. So what you can do, look at how it bled through. So there's two things you can do to fix this. You can get another piece of white and glue it on the inside, or you can just mail it just as is. Um, or you can just do the white alone, cut out a piece of white like this. I could cut out a piece of white and just glue it on top of the card. And that way I'm, I still keep my nice card, but my card front is still, the bleeding won't show anywhere. And so that's a little trick that we can try when we get to the end here. So, all right, so I've enough talking, Jennifer, let's get to work. So here's our little cards. So let me get my black memento ink. Um, let me score this down, it's holding up a little bit. But it's really cool that these cards are already pre-cut. They have the perfect envelope, they're already pre-cut. I don't have to think about it. I literally just grab my stamps. And so I'll have to show you guys my little stamp um, basket here. It's so cute. It's a, I made it, it's a Cinderella basket actually, so. So I made this little basket with the Dollar Tree basket. And I glued a little shoe on the outside and these ribbons are Stampin' Up! ribbons and I just threaded them through the edge of the basket and added my little shoe that I happened to have from a birthday party and um, glued a little rose on it. And so I just thought that was kind of fun. And I made this out of a Dollar Tree basket. Maybe I'll do a little tutorial on that another time. I just thought it was fun. So, all right, so we'll take our little mouse and we're gonna stamp our mouse and we're gonna stamp two trees for our um, our card. Let me get my sample back. I just got a little excited about all the envelopes and everything that I just got distracted. There we go, okay. So I'm actually gonna do my trees first. Well, I guess not. Let me do my mouse and the trees are a little tricky. So let me do my mouse, let him dry and then I'll do the trees. not getting the center. My center of my ink pad might be a little dry. That's weird. I'm not getting the center. There we go. All right. You don't have to press down too hard with the rubber stamps because the rubber stamps are already have this nice cushion on the edge. So you don't have to press down as hard as when you're using other, um, the clear photopolymer stamps. So now what we're gonna do is we're going to stamp a tree off to the side. But I want that tree to overlap. So in order to get that tree to overlap, what I did was I stamped, I stamped a tree just on a sticky note piece of paper. So I stamped and I cut off the edge here, okay? And then I'm gonna align it perfectly with my tree on my card here and the stickiness is great because it does hold it down while you're stamping your other tree so because i want the trees to overlap just a little bit not a ton but just a little bit and i also want the snow to overlap a little and so i should have checked that before and then there's a little bit of snow on the bottom this is the snow it's like little tufts of snow and so and so I just inked it up and you see it overlapped. It went over on the um, the sticky note and not on the actual tree. And let me put my little snow drifts here below this tree. There we go. And that way I still get my little snow drifts, but not necessarily um, all the, not necessarily all the uh, overlapping to where it's gonna mess up my little design. 
So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna color his body. I took all the blues, as you saw from my sample, I took all the blues and tried them out to see which colors I wanted for Cinderella. Part of me wanted to use all of these blues here, but it was almost like a little too dark. So I added in a little bit of the pool party just to add a little extra lightness. Technically, Cinderella is more like a balmy blue. Her, her dress is like a real light balmy blue, which I don't have. So I am going to use, oops, this is the dark pool party, but that's okay. I wanted to use the light, but I used the dark on this one by mistake. I need to read before I start. And so I'm just using the blends. I don't, oops, don't close your card because it will bleed to the other side and you don't want that. And so you just gotta be careful. It does, it may not always, cause these, this is pretty thick cardstock, but it can. And so I just wanted a little contrast. So I'm using the pool party. That's dark pool party. And I'm using um, a starry sky. I think it's this one. Yeah. Well, that's what we're using this time. I think that the sample that I saw online, she used the regular stamp and write. That's the other option is if you have stamp and write markers, you can use the stamp and write markers instead of the blends. You just won't get to add the texture that um, that happens when you use the blends. And so that's the only thing that happens is you just won't get that texture. So I'm gonna color a little bit of pink inside the ear, just a little bit of light Fleur de Flamingo, okay? And then I'm gonna take the ivory, and ivory is like a, it's kind of like the natural blends that I guys, I've showed you guys before. If you add just a little bit of ivory to any color, it just darkens it, just a tiny bit. It takes away, it's like a vanilla. It's essentially like a vanilla color, and it just darkens it, just a touch. Oh. I, I wasn't even looking to see if there were comments. Oh, hi, Sylvia. I'm so glad to see you. Um, so let me go ahead and I think I also added a little bit to his nose. Yeah. And so, yeah, that's just a little trick with the little sticky note to make sure that you don't get, um, so that you, you know, just get a, a, a good way to, to color your stuff. So, okay, let's go ahead and take the light gray granite. I'm going to color my mouse with light gray granite because that's the only color I have right now. Okay. I have the, I don't have the grays. I don't have all the blends, you know. I just buy them as I, I can. Even with the, the stamp pads, I'm slowly getting more and more of the large stamp pads. And you see, I'm just drawing around the ear a little. I just circled around the pink. I, I, I want it to overlap a little bit, but I don't want to color in that nice pink that I colored. And so now I'm just going around his little face. So this is the light gray granite. And then we can take the dark, like I keep showing you guys how to add a little texture. Just take the dark blend. And anywhere you wanna add a little extra shading, you can add shading and it just blends in. I'm gonna add a little to his mouth. And a little down here. And um, I should have done this first before I, I added the light because the light tends to blend it a little bit more. Yeah, that'll blend it a little bit more. There we go, okay. And so it just adds a little bit of shading to your mouse. Um, you can also add a few little daubs. Um, this is the dark pool party. So what I'm gonna do is take a little bit of the dark or the light shaded spruce to get my little stitching that's so cute on this design. I love these little mice. They're so sweet. They're just the sweetest little, um, 
but they're just the sweetest little um, uh, design. And I'm just gonna color the center stripe on this. And, oh, and the little bobble, my little. And then for the tree, for the tree, we did a light pool party. And let me make sure. I'm pretty sure this is the light pool party. No, it's the, it might be the dark pool party. And I know I used the shaded spruce, but I think that might be the dark, just like the jacket. Yeah. So you color your tree with your, I'm gonna use dark pool party because I, I do want the tree to be green-ish. Use the black brush tip. Okay, all right, so then to get my little wisps um, on my tree, let me hold this up a little bit or I'll hold up my finished card. See how I added all this great texture to my little tree? This is using the dark pool, uh, the dark or the light shaded spruce, which is a green. Shaded spruce is a real dark uh, or it's a really bright green, um, but when you color with the blends, the light version is this really light, is this nice light color here. And so it's enough to add um, just the right texture. This is Bermuda Bay, that was too dark, but this is the color here, so this top one here. And so um, it just adds a good color. So in order to get my little wisps, like my little tree-like um, branch, style I literally just started doing these little swoops some of them match the lines of the uh of the stamp and some of them don't but it gives just that extra texture so you have um you have your the design you want you know so it, it gives it like a little movement to the branches this is when brand, I feel like this is when the blends really show off their versatility because you really do see how they blend in. It doesn't look overt enough when you use it on the tree like that. It just gives this great texture. It just blends right in, hence the name. You see, it doesn't look like a, a, a specific line. It's a real subtle the lines are there, but they blend with the, uh, because of the alcohol, they blend together and make it look just more cohesive. So here's our first card. Um, I'm gonna take a tiny bit of the light pool party and add it to my little, um, my little bits of snow. Oh, and the tree trunk, I forgot the tree trunk. Let me just grab a brown here. I have a couple different browns. I'll just grab this. This one is like 200, number 200. So these are the natural tones that um, you can use for different skin colors or fur or things like that. I could have even made a brown little mouse. I just made him gray. I guess I should have made him brown because Jack and um, Jack and Gus are brown. I should have made them brown. Duh. I wasn't thinking. Um, I was just thinking about how the other lady used gray. Um, okay, let me get my color here. I want to stamp Merry Christmas. So I'm using the Merry Christmas that's in the Scotty Dog um, 
It's in the Scotty Dog uh, Christmas Scotty stamp set. They have this great little Merry Christmas because the um, Caroling Mice, this is a host set. I meant to tell you that. So the only way to get this stamp set is if you make an order of $150 or more, or if you have a party with me, a little um, card party, you, we can do it in person in San Antonio here, or we can do it um, online. And when you do, when you host a little card class, or not necessarily party, but a little card class, um, you get, um, oh, and I wanted to do a little, um, Mm. Yeah, I think I'll do, no, I want it in black. I've got some blue on my hand, hang on. My band, I had a band, I have a band-aid on this one finger and then wouldn't you know, I stick it right in the ink. So that's going to stain all my cards unless I take care of it. So a trick is you take a little alcohol and put it, or even hand sanitizer, and you put it on your finger that has the ink and it dries the ink really quickly so that you don't keep pressing down and see, look, there's still a little bit left on my finger. It's going to keep staining unless I get it to dry there. And so a little bit of hand sanitizer or alcohol uh, wipe, which is what I have here. There, You can use these for like shots or something, like sterilizing wipes. Um, and yeah, now the blue is gone. Um, oh, and I have a little um, musical note. I'm going to add just one little musical note above his face because he's singing. And so, yeah, I think just one is good. And we'll color that in real quick. And I think I'll just use the light pool party on that one. Okay. All right, so there's our first card. Very simple. And you see, I did it, like I said, with these pre-made assorted uh, memories and more cards. And so they're, I love that they're already made. And so the only drawback is that if I color directly on them, you will have um, the bleeding. So either I can cover it up, like I told you before, with another piece of cardstock, which I might do, because I didn't realize until I was done that I had all the bleeding. I just wasn't really paying attention. And so what I can do is I can trim down this piece of cardstock and glue it inside here, and then it'll cover all the bleeding. The other option is for me to stamp onto the cardstock and have it pop up. I didn't, I don't really want that, honestly. I don't really want it popped up on the card here. Um, I really did want to just stamp right on the card because um, I don't think anyone would be even mad if they saw the bleeding through the back. I can see why it doesn't look great, but I don't know if anyone would be mad at me if, if they got a card with the, the bleeding side. <laughs> Maybe, but I don't think so. Um, all right, so now we're going to go with our other card, which is going to be all three caroling mice. And um, I should have used brown, but because technically Cinderella's mice are mainly brown. There's a couple gray ones, but they're mainly brown. So when you have a large stamp like this, this is the E block. When you have a large stamp like this, it's better to take your stamp pad and put it upside down and stamp onto your stamp because it's so large, you almost can't get it. It's a little harder to cover upside down the other way. So let me go ahead and stamp my mice in the corner. Okay. And then I'm going to stamp a um, I'm going to stamp a little light um, off to the side. Oh, it's kind of blotchy. I wonder if it's gonna. Yeah, it's it's a little blotchy. Hang on, I got a little too much ink on it. Yeah. There we go. And 
then I'm stamping my light off to the side here. And then I'm adding those little snow drifts. Just a couple here. And let's see. Yeah, just one. I thought I had a couple, but there was just one. Um, and then we can do the notes and everything up above. Let's see. Let's put the notes on since I've got the blackout. And then let me put one of these here. Okay. All right. So we've got all of our black going. Then what I kind of liked from this particular um oh yeah I see what I had tried what I kind of liked is that they had done this weird little frame on the card but I couldn't seem to do it right where it looks okay it looks fine but it doesn't look great and so it's not really my favorite so let me go ahead and let's get back to our mice oh I was gonna stamp Merry Christmas while I'm thinking of it And so there's no embellishments on this card. They're just plain cards. There's no embellishments. There's nothing extra. I kept it as simple as possible because I did want to just focus on the stamps, ink, and paper. Um, that was really my goal, and I felt like I did it. I know I didn't have to do all the mice for our video today, but I did want to... Um, um, I did want to showcase these pre-made, pre-cut cards. Um, I was also showing them to a friend. Now, the memories and more cards, the other thing that's really cool about them is there are these, um, what are they called? There, there are other card fronts where you don't even have to stamp. Um, I don't even know if I have a pack. Yeah, oh, yeah, I do. Is that the book there? Where's my little book? I have a little book here with, um, I guess it's not in here. I moved it. There are these card fronts that you, that they sell that are in, and I don't even have a handy magazine. Um, the card fronts that they sell fit right on top of <coughs> these cards. So you just glue them down. And uh, we have them with Christmas designs. We also have them with regular designs, everyday designs. <clears throat> and so those are also kind of neat. So let's go ahead and get our coloring going. Let me take my sample, because I told you I told you how I didn't get to get my stuff going. But let me get a brown. Let me go ahead and look at a brown. The Stampin' Right markers do not bleed. But the... Um, the Stampin' Right markers do not bleed, but the um, the blends do because of the alcohol. So that's another option is if you just wanted to use Stampin' Right markers. Let me get my blend color chart out. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's this one. Yeah. Okay. So this little fat one, I want to be brown. So I want this brown and Gus, this is Gus. He's like a little lighter and Jack is a little, so we'll do five and 400 and then we'll have a gray one. And that way we have three different colored mice. So that's remedied. There you go. Um, I'm gonna do all their little noses. Let me get their ears and their noses. Okay, and that's light flirty flamingo. 
and then I'm coloring over it with the ivory just to darken it a little because their ears aren't totally pink, pink, pink. And I just didn't want it to be too um, overtly pink. All right. And so now I'm going to take the light pool party on the outside. Oh, let me make sure it's the light one. Nope, this is the dark one again. Got a little too excited there for a minute. So I'm going to take the light pool party. I'm going to color his little outfit. This one's light. I just thought it was kind of cool that she had done this whole thing with the like essentially almost like a monochromatic design, which I wouldn't have normally thought of. And she used um, she used green, but she didn't use traditional green. She used um, uh, the non-traditional color of green, which I kind of liked. Let me do the light pull party on the outside one, and we'll do the dark pull party on the. Um, uh, la, la on the other outside one, because we don't want them next to each other with exactly the same color on. So we're gonna change it up just a little bit. So I remember when my grandmother bought me the video of Cinderella, it had come out on DVD, or not DVD, we still had VHS back then. And, um, and then this one is yeah. and light orchid oasis. Let me see how this one dries. I'm pretty sure. One of these is a little darker than the other and I just can't remember which one because I got them out of order. Yeah, I don't think I used this one. I thought I had, but I didn't. So good the oasis. So yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the color I want here. I can always change the other one. So she bought it when I was on DVD or on VHS, I mean. And she bought it at the grocery store because we were staying. My grandmother had this little timeshare up in Lake Tahoe, California. Um which we love to go to. We went there every October on the Veterans Day. It was usually the Veterans Day weekend most of the time. Every so often it wouldn't fall on Veterans Day, but most of the time it did fall on the Veterans Day weekend. And I remember it was just so fun to go there. We loved it. It was just the best memories there. And um, we just always had such a good time. And we saw the movie was on VHS already. So we, you know, told Grandmother, oh, please, we need it. We really, really need that video, Grandmother. And, of course, she um, caved because she would do anything we asked her to do, <laughs> like, pretty much. And so I just thought it was funny. Funny. And she, um, yeah, she, I don't know, she just loved doing stuff for us like that. Let me go ahead. I'm going to use the shaded spruce, the light shaded spruce on the, I'm going to use the light shaded spruce on this guy's clothes. It looks dark at first, but it'll lighten. I just want his clothes to be a little different than the people next to him. You see, it's definitely a green. It might be a little 
to. I might have needed to use Bermuda Bait, but that's okay. I think it'll lighten up. It lightens up a little bit when you, after it dries. Sometimes you can't trust that initial color. Okay, and this one is the dark, or the light starry sky. So this one is almost the same as the one we did on the other card. See, I wanted to make sure that the coat next to his scarf here wasn't exactly the same color because then it just looked too matchy-matchy and I didn't really want that. I didn't color that part of the sleeve. Okay. And then we take the, um, I'm gonna take a different blue. And so all different shades of blue that you would use. I was tempted to use a purple. Let me see. I think I'm pretty sure this is the light night of navy right there. I'm pretty positive. Yeah, it is. And let's see. Yeah, that's okay there. I wasn't sure if I wanted it. Like I said, I don't want their scarves or their clothing that's right next to each other to be too matchy matchy. I mean, they're obviously all in the similar palette. They're all in blue, a blue, blue teal, but having it next to the Orchid Oasis makes it just a tiny bit different color. Um, let me color his hat here too. And I forgot to color the other one's hat. This is the dark gray granite. I'm gonna put that in all their little singing mouths. And I think I want this this guy to be gray. And so I'm gonna put a little bit of shading on this guy. And just a little bit of shading in the dark. And now I'll take the light and go back over. And it just blends it right in. There's this funny gray little mouse in Cinderella that sleeps in a little matchbox. And I just remember thinking that was so cute. I have always loved little mice. I've never had a mouse. Like as a pet, I've had guinea pigs, but never a mouse. But it's so funny that um, I have loved mice all this time. And I don't even really you know, some of it was Cinderella related and some of it was just, I don't know. And so there's also my favorite Christmas um, book is called Santa Mouse. It's about this little mouse that, um, it's about this little mouse with, um, and 600, I don't want 400. No, I want 400. Yeah, and 600, that's what I want. And then I'll blend a little bit of 300. Yeah. Okay, 
This is my blending one. So Jack is a little bit taller, so we'll go ahead and we'll make him on this one. Okay, and we're gonna use 400 for Jack for the center one here. He has like in a more orange look. Santa Mouse is basically an assistant for Santa. And so we would leave cheese out for Santa as well as, you know, cookies for Santa. We would leave cheese out for Santa Mouse. I don't know why we had gotten that book, but I don't know. We had gotten that book somewhere and we just fell in love with Santa Mouse. So, yeah. So Jack is a little more orangey red, but Gus is um one two three four i think this one's five but gus is um like a lighter tan but yeah santa mouse was always a fun book. I still read it every year. And so I'm still using the 300 as my blender highlighter color. And then I'm using, this is 600 for the color of Jack. And you'll see he's quite a bit lighter, but the shading with that dark 300 will still come through. It's just adding a little bit of shading. Just enough to Yeah, and so he's a little bit lighter and a little fatter. I love it when instead of saying surprise, he says happy birthday. And they show them their dress. So there we go. So there's the little Jack and there's Gus. So we've got our Cinderella mice. And um, yeah. Okay. And then we'll go ahead and we'll do our snow with the light pool party. Again, like we did before. Just to give a little something to the little snow drift. And then for the, um, I'm coloring my, uh, my, um, I'm going to color this in dark gray granite. I don't really want it in straight black. I might get a different gray out real quick. To add a little shading, but. I think it's fine actually. So this one's dark. This one's the light. Yeah. And then I'll think about the bow. And then I'm just gonna use Daffodil Delight for my uh, for my the inside here. Oh, but you know what would be good is if I took the edges daffodil delight and then I grab the lighter one that's dark daffodil delight and then I take the lighter one and it'll add a little bit of a glow like a different shade yeah it just adds a little little texture a tiny bit of texture to the edge okay. and I'll think about the bow here in a minute I might make the bow like red um, and then for my little music notes, um, I 
I guess I'll make them like all a color of the, the same color as the clothes. Although I have an extra one, so I'm gonna do, this one is from him. This one is from him. This one. Oh no, wrong one. This one is from him. And then that one too. I guess these look the same. I might add, I feel like it's. I need a couple more music notes, honestly. It just looks a little funny, like the spacing is off. I'm gonna add a couple more. Just felt like it needed a little balance. It just looked a little off the way I had it. Usually I do it in threes and then I had it in four, but they were too far apart. And let me add a pool party one over here. And the pool party one up here. And then I'm gonna color this one here with the Orchid Oasis. Okay, there we go. And the bow I'm thinking about still, let me think, what color would be a good bow? Let's see, we could do, I don't really wanna do shaded spruce. I guess I could do a real red, but I guess I just kinda like that they were, I guess this one's a little more monotone because the trees match his clothing. Um, this one's a little less. Let me see. What color is this? Light shaded spruce. Light Bermuda Bay. Let's look at Bermuda Bay for a minute. That's light. And that's dark. Oh, that's dark. Yeah, that's dark Bermuda Bay. That's like too dark. Let me do the shaded spruce, I think. Oh, I've got them in the wrong spot. I was like, why am I not able to see my colors right now? I have them in the wrong spot. Okay. And so let's do this light shaded spruce and the pool party again for this um, bow. So I'm going to color the inside with the light shaded spruce. And then... A little bit on the bows and then I'll add that pool party the dark pool party okay there we go and that way it still matches but it's not totally matchy matchy and there's our card that's it the only thing I wanna add was to the envelopes. I wanted to add some uh, stamps uh, with the music notes. So let me get my, oh, and don't forget, if you're wondering how I chose those browns so quickly, I actually have this. It's from Stampin' with Tammy. She's, um, she's one of the highest, you know, Stampin' Up! demonstrators, you know, way beyond me. I'm just, I, yeah. Um, <laughs> I know I, it was me and I hated it too. I was like, so sad. Um, uh, I didn't do a red bow cause I guess I kind of wanted the colors to kind of stay all close to the blues for some reason, instead of red. I don't know. I had something in my brain. Um, and so this is from Stampin' with Tammy, Tammy White. She's one of the top demonstrators and she took the Stampin' Up, this Stampin' Up chart but then she added the numbers and she showed how if you colored them together, you could see what their blended color would be if you mixed them. And so that was kind of cool when I saw that. So I went ahead and I, um, 
I made my own chart and so that's how I figured out which colors I needed so quickly from the browns. Um, all right, so for my, but for my little musical notes, I'm going to do, um, just, I cleaned it off and I'm stamping it with the starry sky. And I'm just doing a couple. No, I'm just gonna do those two. And so we've got our little musical notes there. Our little musical note here. And so there we go. So we've got one on the front, one on the back. So those are our musical notes done. Like I said before, you can just send it as is with the bleeding or I can easily just take this piece of cardstock. Look, I could glue this piece of cardstock down right now and no one would know that it bled through. They would probably wonder why I had this because this isn't the same size. What I need to do is cut a piece of cardstock that's the same exact size and that way it won't look uh, so obvious that it's out of place, you know, and then no one would know that it bled through. So that's one option. And then the other option is to stamp on the card, this piece first, and then glue it right on top, which is how those other cards I was talking to you about, the card fronts, these are memories and more cards. So what happens is you can buy these other little cards that are, um, they're, they're the exact size of these cards. They fit perfectly onto these cards. I have a book here close by. Oh, no, is that it? No, it's not. Uh, I keep thinking it's like right here. Oh, there it is. It is right here. I knew it was here. Let me grab one. So the binder opened on me. There's, these are can be used for like, um, these can be used for, um, uh, what's the word? They can be used for um, scrapbooking. These are really commonly used for scrapbooking, or you can use them for um, card fronts. See, so here's an example. This is an old set, a really old set, but look, it's already pre-made. So you can easily just take the layers and put them right on top. So like life is an adventure. That's what this one is. Sylvia did this class with me, I think, before before. And so all I do is I glue this right on top. Done. There's my card finished. Um, and then there's other ones here like this one, explore more. This one was obviously an explorer travel pack, but they also have a Christmas pack and they have like a springy fun pack. Um, and usually it comes with like stickers like this. Here are some of the stickers that usually come in it where you can add these little layered stickers in there and so these memory and more pack of cards you can buy the separate pack to go on top of the cards and then there's no stamping you just glue that's it and so this these are our cards for today I decided to use them in a traditional stamping sense but um still so cute right Super, super nice. I love how the little mice turned out. And see, this one is a little more monotone, which is where I got the idea from. She had done all of the mice in almost all the same colors. She only changed up, like the, she changed up the scarf and the sweaters colors a little bit. And all of the mice were exactly the same color. And so I think that's why it looked a little more monotone, which I kind of liked. But, I mean, if it's Cinderella inspired, it should at least make the mice look sort of like Cinderella's mice. And so that is our card for today using the Caroling Mice stamp set. And the Merry Christmas came from the Scotty Dog set. Um, because there's no sentiments in this set. But the good thing is, is that when you, um, the only way to get this is that you have to spend $150 or more. Or you can have a card class with me and the people in your, your little card class can spend 150 or more. And if they do that, then you're good to go. And we don't have to worry about making the minimum, you know? And so, um, yeah, and so that's, it has to be at least 150 or more to get this stamp set. And I believe this stamp set is, 
I think it's because you earn your rewards, like with, you know, Pampered Chef and all those types of um, classes and, and parties, you earn a percentage. It starts off with 10% for 150 or more, and then it goes up to, when you get to 200, I believe it's like 12%, and then it's like 14%. And so it goes up more and more as you keep going up. Um, so, but I believe the $15 that you would earn from your 150 would cover this because I think it's only a $12 set. Um, but so cute, right? Just such a cute, cute set. And so I uh, hopefully you're inspired and you guys have a class if you want. Um, yeah, you want to get your Christmas cards. I usually have my Christmas cards, um, already ready. Like I just need to start signing them and mailing them out by Thanksgiving. I try to do that just because I don't want to have, um, I don't want to be rushing at the last minute. Another reason I do is oftentimes I, I avoid Christmas cards and I just do Valentine cards because I don't always send out as many Christmas cards as I would Valentine cards. Cause I just kind of feel like it's fun to do something different. Everyone sends out Christmas cards. So why not send out a Valentine's card? So anyway, so yeah, so just something a little different to try. Oh, that was the difference. I had not added any shading to this this guy here, to any of them actually. I hadn't added any of that shading that I was adding to the other one. So, and makes it look a little different. And that's the dark pool party one. And so, and that little bit of shading will help make it. I just like that extra little design. There we go. It blended it. It blended in. And then over on this one, I think I'll do a little bit of this starry sky. There we go. I knew I was missing something. I was like, what's missing from this little, their little shirts? Good. I'm glad you're sending out cards for everything. That's a good thing because I think that's a fun, I think it's a fun thing to send out Christmas cards, you know, for, um, I do like it. I just don't always send them out on time. And that's what started me doing the Valentine's cards because I would send, I just found that I was, you know, why send it if I'm, it's always going to be late. Why not send it a little different time? And so there we go. So added that little bit of shading. So there you go. So there's our cute cards. So, all right, we'll get to work on your cards there, Sylvia. I'm sure you'll have, you have some stamping up paper, uh, paper pumpkin ones to do from last month. I made a whole bunch of those. Those were fun. And, um, yeah. So I hope you have a great day. Have a good magic Monday, guys. Talk to you later. All right. Bye.